In this video we're going to go over photographing in backlight. Uh, I used to actually find that when I photographed a photograph like this one I used to think oh no I've totally stuffed it up and I can't use this file and now I actually shoot like this because I'm aware of how to work with it in Lightroom and Photoshop. So now it's um, something that I go for. So I took this photo and as you can see there's uh, quite a few. And What I'll do too is I will bring up another shoot with a similar kind of style after we've done this one just to go over that one as well so that I can show you that it really does work uh, for different shoots. Okay, so um, I'm going to just select one of these photos out. Really, it could be any of them. We could work on any of them. I just want to make sure that they're, that they have focus, which they do. Okay, so um, I might work on this one. Okay. So all I need to do is go into uh, the develop module over here and I'm just going to select auto. And what that does is it actually brings out the detail again for me. And really you could leave it like that if you wish. And that's all you might need to do. When you do this though, you might find that the blacks are a little bit too black. It might come back for you like this. So all I would do is drag your blacks back again. Now, the other thing that I do tend to do is work on those highlights and the whites. Um, be careful of that because it can actually blow it. But I bring that up a bit just so that I uh, can have the detail in the highlights. And also it brings back these kind of things, these little bug light that I do love in photographs. See, there's quite a bit of it up here as well. I love all that delicious little bug light. So um, I prefer to bring that out. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is actually take that into Photoshop. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. Okay, first things first, I want to do a blur layer. So I'm going to do a Control J and duplicate that background layer. And I'm going to just do a filter of a blur. So I've got filter blur, Gaussian blur, and I'll just make that a fairly light blur, 5.7 will do. And then I'm going to select the mask button, grab a black brush, and just brush, brush off at 100% on where they are standing and themselves over here. And that just helps with that depth of field. So as you can see up here, I've kept being careful to make sure that they're in, they're still completely painted over. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is add a curves color. So I'm going to go and add a curves adjustment layer and I'm going to pull down the blue and I'm just going to add in some yellow, but also bring that up a bit. So it adds a little bit of vintage tone. And some red, I'm going to add in some red here. And that actually makes it a little bit more sunny. I might even just grab that red a little more and drag that up a bit. And the blues a little more and drag that up a bit as well. There we go. Okay, I'd like to add a, a hue saturation. So I'm just going to add a, an overall hue saturation. But I am going to actually mask that off. So that was, I think, about 14. And I've got grab a black brush and just mark that, mask that off here. And I'll reduce the opacity of that once I'm done. So it's not so obvious. And now I, you know, I love the flare, but I'm not so keen on it on their faces. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity of that down a little and white brush to move it off here. Okay. So all that's done is kind of help to remove that off his face here, so to speak. And I might actually brush it off. Actually, I'll do that with the black brush on their skin tones and on his shirt as well. I'm not really keen on uh, making that shirt come up any further than it is. Okay, so there it is at 100 again, and we'll just reduce that down. Okay, so. I'll just leave it at that. There we go. All right. Okay, so now I want to do another hue saturation. Now this is really to taste. And I'm just going to drag that across plus three and bring my, that yellow a little bit. You could go the either, either way as well. So you could go minus three and go that way. Actually, why don't I just add a plus one? So it only barely, very gently did it. And I'm just going to add 
a little bit of saturation to the overall image as well. Okay, I'm not sure actually on that plus one. I'm just going to play, I might even leave it and just add the saturation on. And we could even erase that off again here. I think that helps. There we go. Okay. So now there's a couple more things that we need to do. I wouldn't mind adding a little bit of a vignette. So I'm just going to add a, a gradient. And instead of making it black, I'm actually going to go for the more warmer red. Maybe even a little bit more orange, but definitely on the dark side. Okay, so more of a brown. And again, might end up on the goldens, but we'll go more yellow on that. Okay, so we've got a brown vignette. I'm going to press OK, and then I'm going to make that radial. And you can do this to taste, and you can also change it once you've done it. And I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. Press OK and multiply. Now that might be too harsh for you and I think it might be even for me so we'll just go to soft light, that's better. And all it's done is it's just brought attention back to them. Okay, now you can erase that off too on the corners if it's too harsh for you, for example, up here. Really, it's up to you what you want to do with that. I might just um, get rid of the black, so to speak, there. All right, so now I'm going to, you could leave it at any point here. We're really uh, fiddling at this point, but I might add a selective color and go to minus three here. And as you can see, that drags it back up to red. So let's see what this does. Minus three and the magenta. Again, adding a little bit more warmth, might minus two. The yellow, raise the yellow up just a little bit. Okay, so we've got minus three, minus two and plus five there. And depending on how much saturation you like, we could even add in a little bit more saturation there. It's up to you on what you would probably like to do. All right. So that's fairly okay. I'm happy with that. Um, I might do some cloning to match this off a little. Um, or even work on that hue saturation there. I might take that layer off. Let's have a look here. Now that definitely helps. I think we'll leave it all there actually. All right, so uh, that's what I would do to this file. Now let's go into another shoot with a similar style to shoot and we'll work on that as well. Okay, before we do though, here's the before of that file. And we'll go to the after. And here's the after. Now, even in looking at that, it made me realize that it may be a little bit too dark for me. So I'm going to go in and grab another adjustment and a curves. That's why it's really important, I think, to compare what you've done. So I'm going to just add a little bit of an S curve there. There we go. And they're supposed to be a bit hazy, so I don't mind that at all. All right. Okay, so here we are in uh, Lightroom. And we're going to go over how to do the same thing with another photograph. First things first, I need to select out which photograph we're going to use. So I just simply need to go through and have a look at them all. Okay, I think I'll use this one, or maybe this one. Let's use this one. All right, now all I need to do is press Auto, and remember to bring those blacks up. Now this time I am going to bring the highlights up because it really helps that sky up there and that glow, and I'm really happy with that. And I might actually just raise the exposure just a touch. Okay, now I'll take that into Photoshop.
first things first, I need to clone out the pole here. So I'm just going to add the patch tool actually and grab that and move that along over here. And I'll just grab this little bit here as well. And now it's gone. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer, control J, and I'm going to add in a blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur at about 5.7. Now all I need to do is add a mask and grab a black brush and brush off on them at a 100% opacity. Now I'm just going to add a curves adjustment layer and do the reds and the blues. Blue down and up that way and the red up. And actually, I might go back to the blue and just add some more golden light in there. There we go. Now I'm going to add in a hue saturation. Okay, I'm not going to mask off this flare this time. I think it's fine. And I might just give that a little bit of a curves boost to lighten them up a touch just as I did last time as well with the last image. Okay, so now I'm going to do a gradient just to add a little bit of that vignette that we talked about last time. Select out the colour, go nice and warm. Radial, inverse, bring this up a bit and press OK and then change that to soft light. Okay, as you can see it's really helped with that glow, you can reduce that opacity down to taste. Now we can do a selective colour on the yellows. We did a minus two, minus three and a plus five. And all that sun is out in yellow there at the top. Now, unlike the other image, on this one I'd actually like to add a little bit of a contrast. So I'm just going to get a contrast, brightness, contrast. And I'm going to invert that by Control i and just paint that back on, on areas that I'd like it. I'll reduce the opacity of this in a minute. I'm just painting it back on into these areas. Just to help lighten them up a touch. Now she has actually got some scuff marks on her knees, so if I select all the layers, I'll duplicate the background layer first and then I'll select all the layers using the shift key and then I'll do control alt E. It'll make a new layer for me to work on at the top. And again I'll duplicate that layer just so that I'm not working on the main file and I'm just going to go in with the patch tool and patch out the scuff marks on her legs. Okay, I'm fairly happy with this. Now what I would like to do is just check the, if I select this layer, just check the tone and the color contrast. There we go. So Photoshop believes that it needs a little bit more contrast and I tend to agree. All right, so that's the done file. So let's go back to the original of that. Press reset before and after. Really all of this is to taste. You could, if it's too much for you, you could go into a group and reduce the opacity of that down, of the entire thing down to taste. It doesn't have to be so much if you don't want it. 
uh, there is a file there for you to play with a DNG. I hope you enjoy this video. 